a mandate is uh, simply to advocate uh, for a, a safe sector, to advocate for a safe sector in the financial inclusion space. And that includes, um, you know, working with regulators, working with uh, uh, industry players like fintechs and commercial banks, insurance companies, etc. Uh, if you remember, maybe three, five years ago, uh, the financial technology sector was not regulated at all. And of course, that made it very impossible for partnerships like these ones that we are having here today between banks and fintechs. Uh, but after, of course, you know, a lot of lobbying, a lot of discussions, a lot of advocacy between FISPA and the regulators like the Central Bank of Uganda, uh, Capital Markets Authority, ETC, uh, regulation has now come in place for fintechs. And uh, as of now, I think we have about 25 financial technology companies that are now licensed by the Central Bank of Uganda, which then makes the sector, um, uh, you know, ready for partnerships like these ones with the banks. The banks can now partner with the fintechs without fear. Uh, they have confidence that uh, the fintechs are now uh, compliant with the regulation. They have corporate governance. Uh, but it also allows for investors to come into the market to be able to, you know, work with these uh, financial technology companies. The consumers of the services that are developed by fintechs are also protected uh, by the central bank. What that means is that if a fintech maybe is providing payments and uh, a payment for a customer has not gone through, then that customer has somewhere to report, has somewhere to start, and that would be um, the central bank. So circling that back to this partnership, uh, we've, because of that, because of um, making the sector now, you know, conducive for partnership and investments, this kind of partnership between equity bank uh, and other commercial banks, I hope can also follow uh, to partner with fintechs. It's, it's quite timely um, because fintechs have very innovative ideas. There's a lot of um, innovations that they're coming up with. Uh, but um, <clears throat> these innovations, some of them are expensive. It's expensive to set up. Um, some of these innovations require the fintech to set up like an agent network all over the country. Uh, something that other players like commercial banks like Equity has already done. So for a fintech, it does not really make commercial sense for you to set up your own. It's only better to share, to have shared services. Um, if you can, if a fintech can ride on the ATM distribution of Equity Bank, on the agency banking network for Equity Bank, it makes a route to market for any form of innovation much, much, much easier. Uh, so these kind of partnerships allow for innovation to prosper. Uh, they enable uh, innovations to happen. Uh, but it also, it's not just a one-way type of uh, partnership, but even also the fintechs now have a lot more to offer. Fintechs have products, fintechs have, um, have products that collect a lot of data. And uh, also we are in a sector where the clients or customers are shared. Someone is on Equity Bank, but is also using uh, the IOTech app, or is also using uh, a merchant service for a fintech like, like IOTech. So you find that because we are sharing these customers, we all have data that we can also share across. So if Equity Bank wants to do credit scoring for a customer or a merchant, it only becomes better and easier if all these fintechs and banks can also share data together. Uh, and that then allows for proper credit scoring, it allows for proper service delivery, it allows for good, good customer experience because then the, the, the financial technology companies and the banks are seamless, they're well integrated. So it gives the customer, the end user, a very good experience when they're using the financial services. It allows for interoperability. Before we've been in a space where you have the uh, a bank app, you also have the fintech app, and they can't talk to each other, but you have money in both places. Now we are moving to a place where you can easily move money from here to here, you move money from here to there. It allows for that interoperability to happen. Um, this kind of partnership is also going to make scaling easier. Uh, many times you are a fintech in Uganda, uh, but also you're also just a fintech in Kampala, in CBD. Eh? We now need to get fintechs to move outside of CBD and go to uh, Karamoja and Akapiripirit so that the people there can also um, um, experience the financial services that these fintechs are providing. But of course, as already mentioned, scaling out also means investment. Yeah. So instead of putting in that investment by yourself, ride on an existing um, infrastructure that has already been set up by a bank A uh, so that it makes it easier 
uh, but also for us as fintechs to democratize access to financial services. So to summarize it, um, really the benefits from this is good customer experience, um, interoperability between players in the market, and also scalability of these services, uh, not just to be in CBD or in Uganda, but to be countrywide, but also to be in regional, uh, regional spaces, East Africa, Africa-wide, ETC.